Um, I'm going to talk about a number of different uh, trends and how the world's changing and how the world's turning. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is, is, is computers. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why Mark Andreessen, very famous uh, startup guy, entrepreneur, was involved uh, right at the beginning with Netscape. He says that software is eating the world. So that means that software is changing every single facet of our lives and really changing even the interactions between people in this room. Um, so it's not just the software, it's the algorithms in there. I mean, hands up who's on uh, Facebook in this room? <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I left Facebook four months ago. Um, but like, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, Netflix. Um, advertising used to be like this. Now it's Google. Um, retail used to be like this. Now it's Amazon, right? Biggest retailer in the world. Um, bespoke tailoring you used to go in and see a wizened guy that used to like chalk you up. Now you can do it online with a company called Indochino in Vancouver and get that all done. Love is now done on using <laughs> devices, right? Every single aspect of our lives. Drugs. In the dark web there was Silk Road, um, which is actually a legal website for, for buying and selling drugs and stolen goods. Uh, that got shut down by the uh, uh, FBI and CIA. Um, and then 12 others popped up. Right? So it's not even street corners and drug dealers or retail or, or anything like that. Um, and the amount of applications that have actually been pushed into the world, you know, it's more and more, I know Blackberry's down at the lower end, but you know, like, you know, one point three five million and one oh, sorry one point three five billion and one point three billion uh, apps from Apple and uh, and from Android um, we're kind of being overwhelmed with new things and and people have new ideas and people can get work done to create more apps more quickly so the transit app there the, the top left uh, you no longer need to use a bus timetable who really uses a proper camera anymore Instagram me too. Well, I bet you use Instagram as well, right? Um, who, who really like sends, like prints out and sends CVs to people anymore? You got LinkedIn. I actually, when I was, uh, when I was, I was actually um, interviewed for a job two years ago, and my, my resume is, you know, elegant, great, well thought through, and they just printed out my LinkedIn profile, right? How often does that happen now? Ways um, crowdsource traffic um, news. No longer need to listen to the radio. Uh, WhatsApp. <laughs> I bet there's a lot of people who use WhatsApp here, potentially. Um, so who really uses uh, normal text and SMS? And yeah, who, who looks in the paper for, uh, for reviews of restaurants? So we, we've got this huge disruption and changing culture and in society. And Mary Meeker, uh, who's a very famous analyst, uh, said it's a reimagination of everything. Um, look up Mary Meeker's name and look at the reports that she puts out. She, she looks at how the world is changing with all the technology that hits in. And she does that every year around about November. So, we've got a huge change in the, the global population coming online as well. More and more people than ever are actually connected to the internet and can actually do some amazing things. Um, whilst the internet users are, are shrinking a little bit, um, about 10% year on year growth, um, smart, smartphone subscribers and the mobile web is, is growing and growing and growing and, and really like tablets are up 52% on the previous year in terms of sales. And tablets kind of are that cross-generational device as well. But we're actually seeing the older generation jumping on board there, and for some people it's the first computer they have. And you actually see this huge upward swing and this huge upward growth. And, and what does that mean? It means that in every corner of the world, people have got access to the internet. And as we know, software is eating the world, and that means that anyone can do anything. Pretty cool. Um, mobile data traffic's up 81% year on year, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why it costs so much to have Telus and Rogers and whatever. Um, and then there's exponential growth that comes from having this new software world. Twitter's actually got about a billion users, but um, uh, most of them are actually spam accounts, but they've got 271 million users in six years. Uh, Facebook got a billion users in eight years, 
Uh, Cityville, which was a part of Farmville, got 100 million users in 45 days. <laughs> right? How could you get 100 million users of anything in the old world? Right? That, that was through Facebook, right? No, I, yeah. No. Um, YouTube, uh, what, this is crazy. 1 billion users and 4 billion views per day. 4 billion views. I mean, it, wh why have we even got normal cable television anymore? You know, I watch things like Vice and The Verge and things like that on, uh, on YouTube. There, there's no need. Netflix and such like. Um, so, the traditional relationships that we have um, in business. So, whether I'm a business talking to consumers or a business that's talking to another business, um, they're becoming less and less relevant in the old world. And, and the new world says that we have to operate very differently. Um, we actually live in a magical time. It's my favorite slide. <laughs> um, so we live in a time where, where, where cyborg uh, unicorns can roam free. Uh, but like, you know, there's, we can actually do anything that we put our minds to. And anyone of any age can. Um, I love this quote from Brian Chesky, he's one of the founders of Airbnb. Um, we used to live in a world where there are people, private citizens, a world there, where there are businesses, and now we're living in a world where people can become businesses in 60 seconds. Kind of blows you away, right? Everything that you need. And, and it's partly because of this collaborative economy, and freelancer.com is part of that, and we're down there in the services section. But this is the new economic ecosystem in the world. I, I don't expect you to see every single little logo in there. Last year's diagram was so much easier because it was like bigger and fewer, fewer hexagons. And this year's a bank, you know, um, who's heard of Uber, right? It's like the Uber of this, the Uber of that. Oh, Uber's in the news, hugely disruptive. Airbnb, uh, freelancer.com. You've even got, um, you know, Craigslist is in here, right? That's one of the progenitors of this whole movement of, of crowdsourced um, working. But you can get utilities and municipal um, services. Um, you can actually even like hire space in, in someone's business because they've put it online through a company like Spacelist. Um, health and wellness, there's a whole bunch of different companies that are just fully accessible from your phone that you can make um, decisions on you know, minute by minute, day by day, wherever you are. You could be hiking. I did a project with freelancer.com on um, using, using my Android uh, cell phone. And I was hiking for the weekend, and I did all my work, you know, in the minutes where I sat down and drank some water. Two, so that software is eating the world. It's, uh, and it's gaining momentum every year. Okay, so it's uh, 2015. World population is just a touch over 7 billion. We're probably going to top out within 15 to 20 years at about 10 billion, they think. Um, number of people on the internet are just over 3 billion, so that's like about 4 billion people that are not connected. That's a huge amount of people, right? 58% of people are not connected. Um, North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Latin America, you know, different, kind, different amounts of penetration in all the places. I think Africa is probably going to be one of the biggest powers in 20, 25 years because they, they've got no existing infrastructure. So in Kenya, they put in payment systems using SMS some sort of 12 years ago, and the reason they could make it work is because they didn't have a traditional banking system, right? So there's something quite interesting in terms of software being injected into places that don't have the infrastructure. They're just gonna leap ahead. If we've got a banking system here, it's likely to be running on hardware and software that could be like 30 to 40 years old. It's kind of crazy, right? But Africa's got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, Latin America's close behind North America. Asia is huge. Um, and whilst you might have a lot of urban centers that are well connected, there's a lot of uh, rural areas that when they get connected, they're gonna wanna get, get involved in the community uh, and get involved in the economy. And really, you know, Europe's still got a way to go, but we've got opportunity. The, the, uh, the other 4 billion people are coming, and they're coming from places that we don't expect them to, right? So the other 60% of the population is about to join the internet. Um, has anyone heard of internet.org? 
So Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and a number of other companies got together and said, we need to connect the four billion people that are no longer that, that aren't connected right now to the internet. Um, then Richard Branson um, actually released uh, a press release at the beginning of last week where he said that Virgin Galactic, his space travel company, has gone into partnership with OneWeb, which is a company that wants to connect the other four billion people, similar to internet.org. But they're going to put 600 satellites into orbit so that there's going to be a mesh network around the Earth connecting everyone in every place on top of every mountain. In fact, you're probably going to get a really good uh, ability to tweet from the top of Everest. But what's interesting about that, like 4 billion and then 5 billion people in the world or on an average wage of, of $10 or less per day. That means that there's an opportunity for a, a bunch of people to, to, to pull themselves out of their current situation. As we know, software is eating the world. As soon as we put software in the hands of people that, that want to make change happen for themselves and there's no barriers, there's going to be huge disruption in the world and, and hopefully a little bit more balance. The first thing that they're doing is raising their economic status. How can I raise more than $10 a day to make my life better? And it's actually never been easier to learn either. So it's not even that part of life where I don't know what I'm doing. Because do you know what? I can go online and I can learn what to do. So even in the past five years, there's been this huge um, disruption to normal education system, right? Um, so, you know, Code Academy, Coursera, Udemy, um, I grew up with the Open University in England, so that's been around for a long, long time, but it's, it's an early progenitor of the model of remote learning. And the thing is, about colleges and, and certain universities in, in the US turn away about 92% of applications, right, and they don't need to anymore, they just like manage them online. Um, there, was a, there was a quantum theory, no, there was an artificial intelligence and quantum theory class uh, taught um, by Sebastian Thrun. And uh, this was like one of the early experiments with online learning. And he was like, oh, you know, I've got 40, 40 guys here, guys and girls here, they're going to learn. I had to turn away all these other people. I know I'm going to put it online. And 160,000 people registered to learn about AI and quantum theory. And then it was like, aha! Um, Coursera was formed back in April 2012, they've got 5 million plus students, 532 courses, 107 partner schools and students from 190 countries, right? This, this is all getting crazy. Okay, uh, edX, uh, started by Harvard and MIT, it's a non-profit, the first one was a for-profit. 1.6 million students, 125 courses, 30 partners, uh, students from 225 countries and territories. Um, in Freelancer, we actually employed a guy in Australia that came to us and he'd done a bunch of Coursera courses and he was awesome. And we didn't care that he didn't go to a traditional university. What if you get a guy that's got a master's from Stanford and he's from Kenya and he learned it all online versus a guy that went to Stanford and spent all that money and then you have them both in the same interview situation? Who's going to get the job? Sorry? The guy from Kenya? Do you think? Well, I, I don't know, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's the thing. It, it, you know, the guy that spent two hundred thousand dollars on his education, or the guy that spent, I don't know, you know, a couple of cans of pop a day, right? Um, and, and our businesses don't know how to deal with this new economy either. It, it's a recalibration. I love it. It's great. Um, but forty percent of people learning online are actually from developing countries. And these are the people that are going to start the new businesses and are going to jump on board as soon as they've got access, more access to the internet. So when the other 4 billion jump on board again, like when, when they get on board, that's, that's not going to be 40%, that's going to be like 90% of people are from developing countries. And why not? Okay, education, that was a big one. This is pretty amazing stat. I use American stats because Canada is a little smaller and doesn't have these amazing big numbers, so I like to be a bit flashy. Um, two million Americans are leaving their jobs every week. About 74% of all Americans are actually considering leaving their job at any one point in time. Um, 
65% of Americans are actually saying that freelancing as a career path is more acceptable. I think freelancers were kind of seen as, as the edges of the work people. was like, oh, we need to get a temp in, or we need to get a freelancer in. Okay. Oh, oh, there is, oh, who's that guy in the corner? Oh yeah, don't talk to him, he's the contract guy. I used to live in that world, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, let's not invite him out to lunch. Anyway, much more acceptable. Um, 69% of freelancers have, have actually said that um, technology has made it easier to find freelance work. And freelancers unions actually formed um, in the States uh, a number of years ago to protect freelancers, give them insurance, help, help really bind that community together. They're a great organization based out in New York City. They just need to start returning my emails. <laughs> Um, but what's really interesting is about 160 million jobs out of the projected 1.46 billion services jobs worldwide could actually be, in theory, carried out remotely. So as long as there's no constraints in supply, i.e. connection, we can get 160 million people online doing more work. I think that's really important. So, we started a company around about six years ago, um, and our CEO uh, built that company up, and now we're quite large. Um, but we, we, we built around the premise that we can connect small to medium enterprises, startups, entrepreneurs, consumers, employees, with uh, a large amount of uh, people from across the world that could do a number of different skills. And um, we actually started with 20 skills six years ago like web design, logo design, data entry, Excel, and we've got 700 plus skills now in the system. Creative writing, ghost writing, quantum physics, uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. You can go on our system, you can see all of these different things that you can do. Music, someone, someone was talking earlier about music in the session I did. We're the largest online outsourcing and freelancing and crowdsourcing platform in the world. Um, and these are the numbers, I pulled these numbers on Friday, so they're a little bit out of date, but it's pretty amazing when we publish this live on our website. You can go to freelancer.com forward slash about and get the absolute latest number and it increases every day. Um, we hit our seven millionth t um, project last week, which is pretty amazing. Um, 14.28 uh, million users. Um, and, and the value of projects is about $2.5 billion have gone through our system. We're bigger than Senegal. <laughs> from, from like GDP. <laughs> We're building a country in software. And, and when you actually think about building a country in software, how, how, how did that start and how did it grow? And we bought a number of com companies um, that take us back to the year 2000 in terms of history. And what you can see here is you can see where projects were being posted, and that's where the pink line starts, and where projects are being undertaken, that's where the blue, blue line ends. But as we, as we build up through here, you can actually see what's happening. So North America, yeah, that's great. Oh, Australia down there is kicking in. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a lot of work being done in India, Bangladesh, and such. Oh, here comes Latin America as well. And then it gets really interesting because there's some blue lines starting to go into North America and into like more developed countries, right? So if we go into 2010, 2011, we've got a very, very different way of, way of looking at the world. It's not the, developing, the developed world pushing um, projects for cheap labor in the developing world. It's about people getting the right work done by the right people for a fair wage all over the world. If you look at Canada, and, and you look about who employs Canadians. So I did some analysis the other day. US, UK, Australia, Canadians. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Singapore. I don't know if that's 10, but like they're all in the top 10 of people that hire Canadians. So there are arguments about Oh, isn't it about just doing work cheaply? It's not. It's about getting the right work done. And it's a, it's a race to the top in many countries. So the growth is, is huge. And, and we did this analysis of 2013 to 2014. And we see, no, 
we can build our city. So civil engineering, building architecture, mechanical engineering, um, CAD CAM design, they're all up. Um, we can build our businesses, Shopify, so e-commerce, that's a great Canadian company. Uh, accounting, recruiting, brochure design, we can get anything done. We can build our homes, we can have someone write some music for us, interior design, furniture design, even home design. And then, you know, we can connect our communities um, after we've taken photos at events like this and put them on Pinterest and creative design and creative writing and photography. And what we're actually seeing is the majority of people that are driving this change within our platform are actually between 18 and 34 years old. They're millennials. And what we're seeing is older generation are jumping in now as well. So it's starting to balance out. But the change in the world is coming from many people that are much younger and are earlier advocates of the system. So imagine what's going to happen when more people jump on and these other four billion say, ha, I'm going to learn how to do this. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to do data entry on freelancer.com. Right? That's an entry level skill that anyone could do. Um, the girl um, that did that last graphic was a girl called Stacy from the UK that I hired from Canada that also designed my book cover for 150 bucks. She designed that infographic for $600. And I showed someone at an unnamed uh, tech company in, uh, in Vancouver. I said, oh, look at this infographic. He goes, oh, how long did that take? I said, well, three days. Um, I was doing some of it on my mobile phone and I was doing some of it online. And he goes, really? How many people did? I said, one person. He goes, how much would that cost? And I was like, $600. Stacy used to work for the BBC building infographics. So I don't think there's, there's any compromising quality here, right? She's awesome as well. Um, so there's all, all sorts of projects that can be done all over the world um, of many different types, everything from design through to building entire platforms. Um, you can build websites. You can design a label for a wine bottle. Um, you can have an idea that one day you're sat in your swimming pool in Australia, true story. It's like, I don't like any of the floaties that exist right now. I'm going to design my own. And you run a competition, and then you create giantswan.com.au to sell giant swans. This is a true story, and there's so many true stories. Um, they're sold out until February, right? Um, and what's fascinating about that is the design contest was $450. That meant that they could go and get them manufactured. The packaging cont contest was $100. The website cost $250 for a fully functional e-commerce website using Shopify. Um, to get each unit made in China was 16 bucks. He sells it at $99 a unit. And he was running at a run rate of about $1,200 a day when his business started. And he had an idea lying in the swimming pool in Australia. Right? Um, so really we talk about 14.2 million lives changed. They're not, they're not just users of the system, they're people whose lives have been changed. If you think about a guy in India that suddenly earns like $200 a day, when he used to earn 10 bucks a day, it's a huge amount of change. It's not small, it's like you can buy a house, you can put your kids in better schools, you can uh, pay for medical bills. You know? Even, even people in Canada like, suddenly can create a business, put it online, and make a complete difference in their society. And not only affect themselves and their personal situation, but they can affect entire communities. Lives changed? Well, I explained what, why, why it's called lives changed. So I'm going to give you some examples. Um, this is Mike. He was flying on a flight, funnily enough, um, on British Airways flight. He read, uh, he, he read an article and he was like, I've got an idea and I'm going to enter it for this competition. So he created outofoffice.com, which is a, a website for um, the LGBT community to be able to like, book travel and, and go on vacation to places that they feel safe. It's kind of cool. And this is a direct quote from him. The word that Edward, that's his username, did on my travel website meant I entered into a competition with British Airways magazine and ended up winning £60,000. That's about $110,000. Uh, competition prize and secured investment uh, of, of, I should say, £30,000, about $50,000, to turn the idea into an actual business. He spent $450. There's no barrier, right? His life's changed. 
His freelancer's life's changed, and this guy's probably going to build a, a multi-million dollar business. It's fantastic. This is Frederick Hudson. Hudson, sorry. Um, he built a company called Pigeonly to be a three million dollar a year business. Frederick had the idea whilst he was in jail in the U.S. because he saw that the amount of data that was being generated that you could use for analysis to stop people from committing crimes again was available but not being utilised. So he created Pigeonly. More than just a business, Hudson sees Pigeonly as a way of reducing recidivism. I practice saying that word. <laughs> By making it easier to stay connected to a family in London, Pigeon Lee is encouraged for, encouraging former inmates to stay on the straight and narrow. Changing lives. So it changed his life, and it's changing countless tens of thousands of people's lives every year, and it will go on changing the lives. That's another amazing story. But what about cash? Right? Manish, off of Freelancer, emailed us last year, around about August, no, September. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for providing me with a platform to do the unimaginable. Um, today I've become a millionaire. That's not Indian rupee millionaire, that's, a, that's an American dollar millionaire. Um, but the base given by uh, Freelancer.com has been instrumental in my success. We're one of the platforms he uses, but he's, he's a millionaire. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. Life's changed. I imagine he hires about 40 people in India right now. And he's going to continue doing amazing work. And more amazing stories come in every day. I've got a folder called Case Studies, just people saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's amazingly rewarding because we're running a really good business. Um, we're doing really cool tech and we're getting ready for the big influx of four billion people. But what's more important is that there's individuals that are hugely affected in a good way. That's why, that's why I joined the company. Um, we, we also use, use the, uh, the platform as well. Um, we said, okay, we need to do some advertising. So uh, we don't really spend a lot of money on advertising, so we're going to put $25,000 into a competition to expose our logo. Um, I'll show you a video in a minute of the winner. But people were like getting onto the news, they were, they were making the shapes of the hummingbird out of, out of people on beaches, um, they were hanging um, like banners of our logo illegally off of towers in Manila. There's lots of illegal activity. It was great, $25,000. Can you imagine what that would do in a, in, a, in a community, especially a community that's not used to, to large amounts of money? <coughs> so the. <laughs> I, I almost didn't play the music, but I actually think the heavy metal of these guys put on this kind of like give it some epic water. Um, this is a this is a this is a city in Bangladesh. They printed off 3,000 t-shirts, 3,000 uh, flags, 3,000 bandanas. Um, they marched 3,000 people into a local um, stadium where they had a 4,500 square foot banner of Freehunter.com logo. Um, and they sat people down, everyone, and taught them how to do the basic skills that would get you online and working immediately. Um, you can't script this, you couldn't organize this unless you had people that truly believe that it's gonna change their fortunes. Remember, like, these people are used to living on less than $10 a day, and often that's for the entire family. And, and oftentimes, the, the women, I'm going to turn that off, uh, oftentimes the women in, uh, in, in these places aren't really heavily encouraged to work by the government either. So these guys are like, you know, screw that. We're going to go everywhere, we're going to get ourselves famous, we're going to help freelancer.com. And look at the size of this, I mean, this is like, like people that, that truly believe, and these are the guys that organized it, and it's awesome. Yeah, let's see if it pans out. No, okay. So, 4,500 square foot banner, 3,000 people, advertising done. So we use it. Okay, that's a little bit about freelancer.com. Number four, our Canada. I moved to Canada six years ago. And uh, 
it, it's a different economy to the UK. Luckily, I moved here in 2008, and the UK went, and we sort of did okay. So it was great. So I, I worked in the advertising business. Um, and there's something interesting. There's 30 million Canadians on the internet right now out of about 34, 35 million people. We're the most connected country in the world. We use Facebook the most, which is a bad thing. Because um, Facebook own all your data. And uh, John Adams, the guy that used to run CSEC, um, this, you know, the equivalent of the NSA for uh, the Canada, he says that um, one half is stupid and the other half is stupid. And he was talking about Canadians putting information on Facebook. Stop doing it. Except all the info, all, all the pictures that uh, Hans said to do earlier. <coughs> okay. Um, but James Moore, I saw James Moore speak last year. Really, really great speaker. Really passionate about digital, minister for industry. We now live in a digital world. What connects us today are the internet and new technologies that have created tremendous opportunities for Canadians to communicate with each other and businesses to compete globally. Our government's top priorities are jobs and economic growth. So this is about putting faster internet speeds in everyone's hands, more computers in everyone's hands, connecting the real rural communities that are out there, getting them online, making a difference, bringing up education, getting people online working. And we're in a situation where only 45% of Canadian businesses have actually got a website. I think it's time for everyone to take advantage of the new economy and looking at, at Comox, I think, I think everyone in this room could actually connect online and, and do something really amazing. And I think you can do that, some of that amazingness with us. I use it, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun and it's great when you're having fun and doing work and you get amazing results. That's it.